Well, hello and a, a very warm welcome to St David's Church in Ermin. Uh, this is our online benefit service for the churches of Rawcliffe and uh, also for Hook uh, for this week. Uh, we've decided that during lockdown that we will mainly put out uh, an online pre-recorded service uh, in the format that was used uh, during most of the last lockdown. Uh, but we're also going to continue experimenting with improving the streamed services uh, so that when we're able to do those again, uh, they will work better. Uh, we'll be doing that uh, using the Rawcliffe live stream to begin with, uh, but possibly the live stream from Hook and Edmund as well, just to try and get those into a position where they really work well and we can use them for those who aren't able to come to church even when we reopen the church, uh, which once we get the live streaming right, it will certainly be the easiest way to do our services and hope that they are able to communicate effectively and well. One of the things we're working on is uh, getting words onto the live streams uh, so that uh, when those who watch they can be seen, and so you can read the words without having to have a book or anything, and also um, trying to make sure we get uh, the shots and the sound absolutely right. I'm sorry about the sound on this uh, recording, I have just been home to pick up an SD card and then discovered that I had left uh, the headset, brought the radio receiver and everything, but anyhow. Um, so uh, we're going to start uh, this worship which will follow the morning worship format that uh, we use on uh, lay led services in our churches this week and uh, we're going to start that with our opening acclamations. Grace mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Our first hymn is Awake My Soul and With the Sun. We take a few moments to gather our thoughts and prayers and then we will pray the collect.
Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence of faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Together we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have readings from the Bible. Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 7, 12 to 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and a terrible end, he will make all the inhabitants of the earth. And these are the words of the Lord. The lesson is from 1 Thessalonians, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Now, when it comes to specific times and duties, my dear family, you don't need to have anyone write to you. You yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a midnight robber. When people say peace and security, then swift ruin will arrive at their doorstep, like the pains that come over a woman in labour, and they won't have a chance to escape. But as for you, my dear family, you are not in darkness. That day won't surprise you like a robber. You are all children of light, children of the day. We don't belong to the night or to darkness. So then, let's not go to sleep like the others, but let's keep a week awake and, and stay sober. People who sleep, you see, sleep at night. People who get drunk, get drunk at night. But we daytime people should be self-controlled, clothing ourselves with a breastplate of faith and love and with the helmet of the hope of salvation, because God has not placed us on the road to fury, but to gaining salvation through our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. He died for us, 
so that whether we stay awake or go to sleep, we should live together with him. So strengthen one another and build each other up, just as you are doing. Our second hymn is The Church's One Foundation. Reading from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 
Then the master who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again to the Thessalonians, in a similar mode to what he was writing earlier as we've been going through Thessalonians, about the end of time, and it's something that uh, he's encouraging them to take on board. And in this passage towards the end of the book, he comes to a point of saying, you know it's coming, you know about it, I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but sure as anything, it is coming. And he uses the illustration initially of uh, childbirth and of uh, a woman in labour pains who knows the baby is going to come, but doesn't know when that child is going to come. And I've been there myself, I've had two children. Uh, both of whom were uh, at least 14, 15 days late, so we had a long time thinking, when are they coming, when are they coming? Knowing that it would happen, but not knowing when it would happen. Eventually, one at least was 17 days late. Uh, so, uh, But they've turned out to be wonderful people most of the time since then, and uh, a great opportunity to uh, celebrate that moment when it came. And St Paul... Maybe it doesn't say this, but I think it's something we can connect to it. That in some ways what we are looking forward to is like childbirth. That one day we will be released into a new world, a, which is fuller and more spacious and more amazing than the womb ever could have been. And that we will be, need to be ready for that. And we get ready for it uh, in this time in the womb earth, uh, where we are receiving the nutrients from God, where we are being prepared, ready to live uh, that fuller life that is to come. Of course, uh, children, babies have no idea of that and it's not uh, something that we can particularly make a straight line between, but it does give us a picture, a picture of something that is true, something that is true that uh, we have a hope of an everlasting life which is completely amazing and at this time we are restricted. We are restricted particularly by our current circumstances but even without those circumstances we are restricted. We live within space and time in a way that uh, we will not live within space and time when eternity comes. One of my great hopes is that heaven will be a place where I can work to the speed of my thoughts because we can think so amazingly quickly and have solved problems in our heads, as many of you would have done in the pub or in other places in conversation. And that's solved, but the reality of doing it in this world is that it's a lot of hard work and that the problems aren't nearly as easy to solve. Maybe that's a picture that's completely wrong, but the idea of eternity is somehow outside of time. And St Paul also talks about time. He talks about time using the Greek words, I'm told, uh, which are chronos and kairos. And chronos is the moment, and kairos is the bigger picture. And we live in a society that's very tied into that chronos way of living, where everything needs to be now. And now that my children are on the edge of teenage, uh, that's one of the things that they're very into. They want things now and they want it to happen immediately. 
and they can't see the bigger picture of how things fit together. As an older person, maybe not as old or experienced as some of you, but certainly beginning to realise that I've actually lived quite a bit, I'm able to see from the world that I have seen across uh, the third world and in this world and in different places in this country and in different things that I've learned about how the bigger picture fits within the moments that we live in. And those moments feed into it in a way that we need to work. You may have, some of you, seen a programme this week which was on Channel 5 about how Britain won the Second World War. Um, some people might say that we didn't win it, it was a whole combination of people who won it, but anyhow, uh, in that programme, uh, on the beginning of the section about the Battle of Britain, uh, there is mention of a lady called Mrs Schilling, who created a carburetor, a device in the carburetors of the Spitfires and the Hurricanes uh, to enable them to f not f flood their engines. On the patent for that device, uh, there are two names, W.C. Clothia and Naylor Lee Schilling, B, Beatrice Schilling, that is, and W.C. Clothier was my grandfather. He was a man who never claimed uh, anything of what he did or was very quiet and never told us much about how he was. We only discovered he had a first class degree after he died. Uh, we know that he was involved in solving the comet disasters and working out that it was because of the shapes of the windows that uh, those planes had gone crashed in, in one high level flight and had then crashed and because of that work enabled us to fly commercially today. But he was a quiet man who uh, never really claimed any greatness. But my experience of, was, of him was that uh, his was a way of living that was very much with an attention to detail. Everything he did, he did very well and in a timely manner. And he had a kind of picture which didn't grab Kronos as the moment you had to do something quickly, but the moment you had to do something well. And he would do things well and effectively, and they would last. And they would now fit into a bigger picture of things that have changed our world. Very few of us will have the privilege of being able to claim that for us. But we can be people who are timely with the way that we use our time, as the way we use our moments, so that those moments feed into a bigger picture effectively and well, and that they don't become too rushed. And if we do that, we will be uh, like St Paul wants us to be, those who are preparing ourselves for eternity in a way which takes that context, in a way which says we are not big or significant in so many ways, yet who we are and what we are in its smallness and in its attention to detail is important. And that importance is important to us, to those who we love, to wider communities that we're engaged with and how we learn to be those who love, who have compassion, who have kindness, who have generosity, who do things well and carefully that ensure that others are looked after, that value is given to all. The way that we do those things in a timely manner, not claiming great things for ourselves, not wanting to make ourselves great by it, but wanting to prepare ourselves for eternity and to help others to be living this life well so that they are ready for what is to come. How we do that is what really will define how we are judged at the end of time. For if we have done it now, if we are ready and now in what we're doing, will be ready then. And if we are those who ensure that we don't rush, but we do this steadily and properly, make sure that where there is opportunity, where there is challenge, we are taking those things on. 
where we are constricted, we are working within those constrictions effectively. Then when we are set free, when we are set free at the end of time, we will be there set free with many, many who we love. We ask that God may help us to find ways to do that, to listen to his voice, to be willing to respond day by day, hour by hour, to whatever is in front of us. And to know that we have lived out our lives in ways that please him. Amen. We sing the hymn, Loving Shepherd of Your Sheep. We join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In today's intercessions, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please reply, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving health among all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church. Guide and govern us by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and righteousness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body or estate. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings 
and bring good out of all their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ, and we give you praise for all your faithful ones, with whom we rejoice in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is in a more modern style. It comes from South Africa. We are marching in the light of God. final prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So uh, that brings us to the end of today's service. Uh, a notice for those people from Hook about the road closure. Uh, Hook Lane, uh, Westfield Lane and Church Lane are going to be closed uh, for from the 23rd of November. That's Monday week uh, for 
maybe even to the 21st of December, it says 15 days on one of the notices, it might be longer than that, we shall see what happens. Uh, and they're going to do major works on that. During that time, access to the church will be open. I've been in contact with the engineers who do the work and they say that that will be okay. Uh, you can come in from the end uh, at High Street, uh, come past the closure there and come up to the church if you need to with a vehicle. And if anybody needs uh, a funeral or anything, then that will be possible. Uh, in fact, funerals during lockdown are still allowed uh, in our churches. Uh, so if we do know of anybody who sadly loses someone they love and would like to use the church for a funeral, uh, it is possible to have funerals in church uh, during lockdown. Uh, and uh, other services will resume hopefully on the 6th of December uh, and again we will still have access to Hope Church and hopefully we'll have a better way of doing our live streaming for those services so that those who can't uh, get the live stream will be able to stay at home and have a really high quality service that they can engage with. Whether it's simply to care for someone in your family, to give or engage with an issue or event in the world, however each moment is used, may God bless you and help you and enable you to know that you are loved and valued and that you can do things without rushing, but that you can do things effectively and well, which have a small impact, and but a lasting impact. And we never know the true value of what we have done until the end of time when we will be set free. So go in peace, to love and serve the Lord this week. In the name of Christ.